the Nissan Magnet has been a big seller for the company in India. So this new model has a lot resting on it. Now the changes, we'll go through it in this video, but the important thing to note is prices actually haven't gone up all that much from the last model, which is quite a rarity. They're introductory prices, but 5.99 lakh, that's where it starts and it goes up to 11.50 lakh, which aren't, like I mentioned, really high raises from the last model. So let's see what that actually gives you in this video. Now, as you'll see, the changes are largely cosmetic. The overall shape, face of it has not changed all that much. So you have a slightly different looking pattern to the grille. There's a more chrome here, obviously, but there's also a bit more gloss black. Now, the lighting itself hasn't changed all that much. It's still got that projector LED setup from earlier. Same with the DRL. But this bumper has, again, changed. It's again, tried to go with a slightly more premium, upmarketish look with the, all the silver finishes that are on it and this fog lamp. Now, another change from the earlier model is that you now get a 360 degree camera setup. There's no ADAS, but there's 360 degree camera. Now, the engine options, they haven't changed. There's no mechanical changes, like I said. So you still get that 1.2 liter naturally aspirated motor with 72 PS and that one liter turbo with about 100 PS. Torque outputs, again, similar for the turbo, 160-ish with the CVT. And this is about 92 Nm with the naturally aspirate. Now, like I said, the gearbox options, again, very similar. You get a five-speed manual and an AMT for the smaller engine, less powerful engine, and a CVT and a manual for the turbo. And as you can see, not much has changed in profile with the new Magnite. You have some new colors here, like this orange being one of them. And you have a new design for these alloy wheels there. 16 inches in size, again, not different from earlier, just the design of it has changed a little bit. Now, you will see that, again, at the rear, the sense seems to be to make it feel a bit more upmarket and that you have with this new sort of design for the light cluster. You have these horizontal LED motifs here and that same goes with the boot. You have a bit more chrome here, the badging has not really changed much and there's again that silver finish to the bumper. Now as you will expect considering there haven't been any changes made like I just mentioned, the boot hasn't changed, it's still 336 litres. And yeah, you still get that 60-40 split for the second row. Now, once you step inside the Nissan Magnet facelift, it's clear that the big change is this new sort of orange theme to it. But when you look closer, you realize that a lot of work has also gone into sort of uplifting the sense of quality in this space. So the plastics here seem of a slightly better quality. These may be not that much better, but there has been a slight uptake in quality. And you really notice that with these orange surfaces. Now, most of them are soft. You don't, that's something you don't find in this segment often. So you have soft materials here. Of course, on the seats, even the central sort of console is soft. These door cards have a soft, soft finish to it, which is quite different, something unique. Maybe gives this car a sense that it's more expensive than it is. Now, among other changes, you also have contrasting stitching to go with this soft material. You have new graphics for the digital display. It's still that same unit, but the graphics have been updated. This car is not switching on, we don't have the key here, so I can't exactly show you that. Similarly, you have this touchscreen. This is what was debuted in one of the limited edition Magnites that has come back here. But you now get 360 degree cameras with it. You still have that climate control function, but you now get a PM 2.5 air filter with that. Now, among other features, you keep getting the wireless charger. You get uh, a type A port here. And then of course, there's wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay with the screen, so that's covered. You get Artemis audio and you get this frameless mirror now for the rear view. And it's of course automatic. Now, in the second row of the Nissan Magnite, things again, in terms of space and comfort, not much has changed. The seat cover is slightly different, still flat. You have a decent amount of under thigh support. There's a good deal of headroom. So all that is not a problem. And again, that sense of sort of trying to uplift quality seems to be a mission here. And you notice that with the soft materials here, these door handles, the latches, they're of really good quality, I must say now, metallic. The plastics here, yeah, maybe they may be a step down from what you have in the front. But yeah, like I said, the seat is nice and white, so a family of four will be quite comfortable. You have the center sort of rest to put bottles and maybe your phone here. These AC vents here, they again seem to sort of uplift you a little bit and a type C charge port, which wasn't there earlier. So, like I said, the Magnite is priced between rupees 5.99 to 11.50 lakhs. So, do you think they've been successful at making this SUV feel more premium and still retain the good value that made it successful in the first place? What do you think? Let us know in the comments. Mm.